Previously in this section we learned how to read and write file synchronously. Now in this lecture let's learn how we can read and write file asynchronously. To read a file synchronously we use this read file sync method on this FS module and to write a file synchronously we use this write file sync method on this FS module and we are importing this FS module here. Now this FS module also provides methods for reading and writing asynchronously. For example if you want to read a file asynchronously on this FS module, we have a method read file. Okay, so this read file sync method reads the file synchronously, but this read file reads a file asynchronously. To this read file method, we need to pass three arguments. The first argument is the path of the file which we want to read. So here inside this files folder, I am going to create a new file. I will call it start.txt. And inside this start.txt, I will simply write input. So this is the only content of this start.txt file. Let's save this start.txt file. And here, let's go ahead and I'll specify the path of this start.txt file. So it is in current directory, files folder, and inside that we have this start.txt file. So this is the first argument for this read file method. Then the second argument is the encoding. So here, for the encoding, let's specify utf8. And finally, the third argument is a callback function. And for the callback function, I'm using the arrow function syntax. Now, this callback function will be called when the job of this read file is complete. That means when this read file method has read all the content from this file, it is going to call this callback function. And when it will call this callback function, it is going to pass two arguments here. The error argument, I will call it error one, and the data argument. So basically, this data argument will be assigned with the content which this read file method has read from the specified file. In this case, the start.txt file. So whatever this read file method has read from the start.txt file, that content it will assign to this data one parameter. But let's say if some error occurs because the file is not present or the directory is not available. So in that case, this read file method is going to return an error. And that error will be assigned to this error parameter. Now you can name these parameters anything. I'm simply calling it error one and data one, but you can also call it error and data. But keep in mind that the first argument here will receive the error object and the second argument here will receive the data. And once this callback function will be called, we want to log the data which this read file method has read from this start.txt file. So I simply want to use this console.log statement and here I want to log the content which we have inside this data one parameter. And what is this data one parameter going to contain? It is going to contain the content of this start.txt file. With this, let's save the changes and let me go ahead and let me run this app.js file. And here you will notice that input has been logged. That's because in this start.txt file, we have input as the content. So this has been read and that content has been assigned to this data one parameter and we are logging the data one parameter. That's why it is logging input. Now, just to prove that this read file method here is running asynchronously after this read file. Again, I'm going to use this console.log statement and there I will say reading file. Let's save the changes here and let's go ahead and let's run this app.js file. So here you will notice that first this console.log statement has been executed and then only the data one variable has been logged here. So basically when this program will run, since this read file method runs asynchronously, this code here will be handed over to the background where this read file method will do its job. And since the main thread is empty, this console.log statement will be executed in the main thread and it will log this message reading file. Now, once the job of this read file method is complete, that means once it has read the content of this start.txt file, this callback function, which we are passing to this read file method, this will be pushed to the main thread where it will execute. And there it is going to log the content which we have in this data one variable. Now, what we also want is once this read file method is done reading content from the start.txt file, then we again want to use this read file method to read the content of another file based on the content which we have read from the start.txt file. So here on this FS module, let's again call this read file method. And to this read file method, we need to pass the path of the file. For that here, I'm going to use backticks. And there I will say dot slash for current directory, 
then we need to go to this files folder and there i'm going to use this template detail syntax and here i'm going to pass data one so whatever content we have read from the start.txt file we are going to use it inside this path so basically in this start.txt file we have read this content input and on that i'm going to use this txt so basically here i want to read the content from the input.txt file if this start.txt has content output in that case i want to read the content from output.txt file so here the job of this read file method depends on the result of the previous read file call and that's why we are calling this read file method inside this callback function we are not calling it outside of this callback function because we only want to execute this read file method once we have the result from the previous read file method if i use this read file method outside of this read file so basically here in that case both these read file methods will run asynchronously and we don't know which read file method will finish first but here our requirement is such that the second read file must wait for the result of first read file then only this second read file should start its job and that's why we are calling this read file method inside the callback function of this first read file method all right now for the second argument let's pass the encoding which is utf8 and let's also specify a callback function and again this callback function will be executed once the job of this second read file is complete that means once it has read all the content of this input.txt file and this callback function also going to receive an error object so i will call the parameter as error2 and also the content which it has read from the input.txt file so we want to assign it to this data2 parameter and let's go ahead and let's log the content which we have in the data2 variable let's save the changes and let's go ahead and let's run this app.js file so here this content is coming from start.txt and this content is coming from this input.txt so this data one is going to store this input so this second content is coming from input.txt now let me also show you what this error parameter contains so if this read file method has read the file properly without any error in that case this error parameter will be assigned with the value null and to prove that let's go ahead and let's log this error to parameter so now instead of logging this content here it should log null because while reading this file it has not faced any issues there is no error that has occurred right so if i save the changes now and if i run this program again so this content it is coming from start.txt file and this null is basically the error object which we have logged here so this error 2 so this error 2 is currently assigned with null because here no error has occurred now in the start.txt file instead of input let me say input 1 2 3 so with this name we don't have any file inside this files folder and now if i go ahead and if i run this app.js file let's see what happens here you will notice that from the start.txt it has read 1 2 3 so that has been logged here and then in the second read file method here an error has occurred because we don't have any file with the names input 1 2 3 and that error has been logged here so this error object here is logged and the error message says no such file or directory okay so let me go ahead and let me log this data to instead of error and here also let's go ahead and let's change this content so let's make it back input let's save the changes and let's run this app.js again so here we still see null that's because here we need to save this app.js file and now we have the correct output let me clear the console here all right now what i also want is inside this files folder i want to have a new file i will call it append.txt and inside this append.txt i want to have some text content okay so here i have specified some text content now what i want is from this app.js after we have the data from this input.txt again i want to read file from this append.txt and i want to do it only once i have the data from the input.txt so again we need to use this read file method inside the callback function okay inside this callback function because we only want to read this append.txt file once we have the result from the previous read file method all right so again on this fs module i'm going to call this read file and to this read file we need to pass the path of the file so again in the current directory we have the files folder and there we have append.txt 
then let's specify the encoding it should be utf8 and let's also specify a callback function so this callback function will get executed when this read file method has successfully read all the content from this append.txt and this callback function is going to receive the error object so error parameter i'll call it error3 and the content the content which it has read from the append.txt file i'll call it data3 and for now let's simply go ahead and let's log that data in the terminal so i want to log the content which we have inside this data3 let's save the changes again and let's also save the changes in this append.txt file and now let's go ahead and let's run this app.js and now you can see the content of start.txt file has been logged here content of input.txt has been logged here and the content of append.txt has been logged here now once we have the content of input.txt and the content of append.txt now what i want is i want to write something into this output.txt file so let me go to this output.txt file let me remove everything from this file so now this file is empty and now i want to write the content of input.txt and the append.txt inside this output.txt file so to write a file we can use write file sync method which will write synchronously but here we don't want to write the content synchronously we want to write the content to a file asynchronously so for that on this fs module we have another method called write file and this write file method writes a file asynchronously to this we need to specify the path of the file here we want to write to output.txt file so in the current directory we have this files folder and there we have this output.txt then we also need to specify the content which we want to write to this output.txt file here i'm going to use backticks and there first i want to write the content of input.txt file so basically this content and we are storing this content inside this data to variable this data to parameter so here i will use template literal syntax and here i will say data two then i want to add two line breaks for that i can say slash n slash n and then i want to write the content of append.txt and we have the content of append.txt inside this data three parameter so i will use data three parameter here and then let's also go ahead and let's write the date and time at which this output.txt file was written so again i will use this slash n in fact i will use this slash n two times because i want to insert two line breaks let's also close this curly braces okay so this is the second argument of this write file so in the second argument we specify the content which we want to write to the file and finally to this write file method also we need to specify a callback function and that callback function gets executed when the write file method is done doing its job that means when it has completed writing the content into the file specified so in this case this callback function here it will be executed when this write file method has done writing the content into this output.txt file and once that job is done we simply want to log a message in the console saying that file written successfully with this let's save the changes and currently if i go to this output.txt file currently this file is empty now let me go ahead and let me run this app.js file if i press enter you can see that the content of input.txt the content of append.txt and also the date and time at which this file has been written that has been added here in this file and this file has been written asynchronously because here we have used this write file method which gets executed asynchronously now in the last lecture i mentioned about callback help and i told you that when you see a triangular shape in your code it is a clear sign of callback help so basically if you see here here we have that triangular shape and this is a sign of callback help that means in this code we have callback help and if you notice here we are calling a callback function inside another callback function inside another callback function inside another callback function and this is what a callback hell is now we can avoid callback hell in our program by using async await or by using promise now i'm not going to do that here because that is out of the scope of this course but in the description i will share the link of two lectures which you can watch to understand how you can avoid callback hells in your program using async await and javascript promises all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day